Hello everyone and welcome to another video by yours truly, Fran Agolto, on the Headless Developer Relations team here at WP Engine. And in this video, we're going to go over the Headless WordPress and Next.js 14 core competencies in the App Router. So let's dive right in. The App Router in Next.js 14 allows you to use React's latest features such as server components and streaming. Combining this with Headless WordPress can be daunting, especially with the latest features within the framework and how the rendering methodology fits together in certain use cases. So as I pull up the Next.js docs here, as you can see, there's a couple of things that you need to think about when you're using the App Router because the addition of it um, with Next.js and React server components have ushered in a significant paradigm shift. In the past, devs using Next.js may have considered whole pages to be either statically generated or server-side rendered or incrementally statically generated, regenerated, excuse me. Now, we're most thinking of these things and apps in terms of where should this render, server, server, client, or both, and when should this render, build time, run time, or stream whenever the server sends the response. By the end of this video, you'll end up with the Next.js 14 project that contains the repo within the article I wrote. This is just the video version of it. So let's get to the challenges and then go over the rendering patterns in Next.js app router. The first, the first step here is to create a net new Next.js app router installation. So let's go ahead and grab the npx command to pull down the package. Go back to terminal here and paste that in. This is going to be at latest. Now we're not going to use any TypeScript or anything. I'm just going to use pure JavaScript. And let's call this core comp video. No TypeScript. We will use ESLint. We will use Tailwind. We will not use the source directory and we will use the recommended app router. No alias imports and there it is pulling everything down that we need with the dependencies. Great. Stoked. We have our net new project here. So we just have to CD into that directory. I called it core comp video. So comp. now that we're in there, we can open up the code and take a look at the folder structure. When you spin up a boilerplate next JS app router project, what you get here is the folder structure from the default boilerplate. There is the app router folder here and you have a layout JS file in the root of the project that is shared across everything in the root. And then you have your page.js file, which is the naming convention of whatever's rendered on the browser, basically your page. We're gonna just change this because I like putting JSX in front of things that essentially render out some JSX. Okay. And then let's just make sure this works. So we're gonna to go to terminal over here, clear this all out and then npm run dev to start up the development server. Go over to the browser and it's off port 3000. And there is the landing page of the Next.js 14 app router. Headed back to Visual Studio Code now Everything is configured for us. And the first thing we're going to need to do, we have to go over the nested layouts and partial rendering features. Now, nested layouts are a new feature in the app router. Beginning with it, what we want to do is create a root layout that applies to the entire application. It should render the markup with a title DevRel Headless WordPress Core Competencies. So I've already made this with a repo, so I'm going to go ahead and copy over the default layout that spins up with the Next.js 14 boilerplate. And let's go over this code right here. Our layout.jsx file sets up basic HTML structure 
We have got a custom font, a nav bar, which I've already created within the components folder that's coming in from that. And then it has a dynamic uh, content with footers. It ensures that the rubric font is applied globally and provides the consistent layout for all pages in our application since this, this is at the root. This is a default function component. We name it root layout. And then it takes children as props here. And this will represent the nested content within this layout. The next thing that we have to do is create a dashboard route with a sub route called purchases and then a dashboard account route within the same folder. And then we just wanna render a div element for now on each. Let's go ahead and do that. In next 13, excuse me, next 14 in the app router, the folder structure reflects the actual route. So we're gonna go dashboard. Did I spell that correctly? Dashboard, yep. Now that's a route, and then we're gonna make a sub route in there called purchases. And then another route called account. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a account page, which we will create by calling it page.jsx. Then we're gonna have a simple React functional component with some JSX here, and we'll call this one account. Same thing for purchases. Okay, and then we'll have a functional component and we'll call this one purchases. Now in the root of the dashboard folder, we want a nested layout so that it has its own layout across within its route tree. So let's go ahead and go to the dashboard. And within it, we're gonna create a layout.jsx file. And within this JSX file, we are going to add the code that essentially just is a default function that displays links from next link components to link between the purchases and the accounts page within the dashboard route. So let's make sure this works. Let me make sure I saved everything here. Okay, we're gonna run the server. As you can see here, we have my nav bar at the top, which I've made. Here is the title here up on the head. DevRel Headless WordPress Core Competencies. Now, if we visit the dashboard route by itself, it should 404, perfect, because we don't have a dashboard page that exists, but we do have a dashboard slash purchases page. There we are, and we should be able to route between the two. Purchases account, great, this works. The next competency we wanna talk about is images. Images are an important part of any website, and in Next.js, its image component extends the HTML tag with features for auto-image optimization using a variety of props and configs. Let's utilize this image component to render an AVIF. So an AVIF is a powerful open source free file format that encodes AV1 bit streams in the high efficiency image file format container. I already have an AVIF file on my desktop. So what I'm gonna do is the first thing we need is to drag that AVIF file, AVIF file over into my project. So here it is, and I'm just gonna drag this into the public library. And then I'm gonna rename it here. Let's just shorten it and call it Mike Avif. Now that it's in there, let's go to the account page and render this image at the top using Next.js's image component. So going over to the page component within the account route, 
we're going to do this within this component. And then what we're also going to want to do is render details and summary elements that display the following questions that were from my article. And you'll see them on the code editor here shortly. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the pre-made code. All right, we've got the code implemented here, and let's go ahead and talk through what's going on with the code. At the top of the file here, we import the image component from Next Image, which helps us optimize the image handling on Next.js. Then we have a default function that exports the named account component, and this will return a div element with an image component in here. And this is where we can configure what we need. We have a source property that specifies the path to the image file. We have an alt prop that provides a descriptive text for accessibility. We have the width and height properties, which define the intrinsic width and height for maintaining aspect ratio. And then the layout prop, which makes the image responsive, adjusting its size based on its container within this. So this makes it real easy in Next.js to have images configured the way you'd like. Now at the bottom here, we have some information and questions, sort of like a quiz style on images in Next.js. And this is all just markup. So let me save this up here and let's see if this works on the browser now. We're at the purchases page. Let's navigate to the account page. There's our image, stoked, that works. And then if I click on this arrow, it should drop down the markdown for the questions that we inputted on the file. So this all works now. The next challenge and section that I wanna address is server components and data loading in Next.js app router. With React Server Components, uh, they allow you to write the user interface that can be rendered and optionally cached on the server side. In the app router, the rendering work is further divided by route segments to enable streaming and partial rendering, and the data loading is also done on the server. So let's test some things out with the routes that we're gonna create next. Let's go into Visual Studio Code, and the next thing we wanna do is create some static rendering options here. So we're gonna utilize a React server component that does the data loading and rendering on the server. And the goal in this section is to create a full static page that can be cached on a CDN in a server component. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a static rendering route segment. So we're gonna go into the root of the app directory here, and we're gonna say static slash rendering and within this we need a page.jsx file for the static rendering page and then let me grab the code here and paste in and we are going to go over this now within this page component all the work is being done. We have at the top an async function, which is called get post. And this is our WP GraphQL query. This will grab the first 10 posts with its title, excerpt, date, database ID, and the URI. And then we have an await here that fetches it by the public GraphQL endpoint. And then we have to encode that because we are using a get request for better performance and if you need better information on why get is better performance than post, I have an article that I'll link in the description of the YouTube channel. And then the header type is application JSON. And then, um, then we return and traverse that data with the data.post.nodes. And then down here we have a default async function which is the post list and then we have the const here to get that request of the data of get post and then once we do that we have the jsx with the map method that and maps over the different posts to display their title and their content 
And since we are grabbing data from a different environment, which is our WordPress server, via our GraphQL endpoint, we will need a .env file. Let's add that into the root of the project. .env.local. And then the key that we need is next public GraphQL endpoint. And then we are going to put the value, which is the URL. And I'm grabbing that from my WordPress backend. There we have it. And this is public, so it's not, it's not private or anything, so it's fine. And we'll spin up the, we'll cut the server, spin it back up, and this should run. Let's visit that page. So I've already built a nav bar here and we have the static rendering option. So let me click that and boom, there we have it. We have our post and the excerpt of our post as well as the date right here. And this is a statically generated page that is being rendered on the server and can be fully cached on a CDN. So if I hit this, couple times you can see it loads pretty fast stoked we have this fully static page but there is a problem since we chose this way when a new blog post is published this page will be out of date it'll show the same list of posts that existed at the time it was generated so what we need to do here is the stale while revalidate method now let's go and dive deep into this we're going to go to Visual Studio Code and replace this const response wait fetch call with a different one that has a post request with the revalidate object like so. And the reason we're using post is that the controlled environment it provides for managing dynamic content updates, which does align with the incremental static regeneration or ISR. Um, this ensures the static content remains fresh and consistent without the um, HTTP caching for the get request. Otherwise it won't work. Let's test this out now. So let's go back to terminal really quick, run this server and experiment with the timed revalidation of the app router. Okay, I have this static cached page right here. My favorite summer movies. We're just gonna mess around with this title. And instead, we're going to say fast times at Ridgemont High. Great movie if you haven't seen it. Oldie but goodie. We're gonna hit update. We're going to go back here. And as you can see, I refreshed and I still got the stale data. Now, wait till 10 seconds elapses. Should be around now. When we hit this again, we should get the new title. There it is, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So this is working. It's revalidating every 10 seconds. So the first user gets the stale cached data and then after 10 seconds every other user is going to get that fresh data let's try it one more time let's go back and go summer movies are cool which they are summer movie stoke and let's change this here Stoked for summer time. You're gonna update this. Now when we visit back to the browser and we refresh, we should see, yep, stale data. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This should now show us the change down here and here. Sweet. This works and we have implemented the time revalidation in the app router. The next method I want to talk about is dynamic rendering. 
Now dynamic rendering or server-side rendering, or SSR as it's more known, is content rendered on the server for each user when the user visits the page at each request. Now this method is, it, it's beneficial if you need real-time data, user-specific content such as like a dashboard or access to info that can only be known at request time like cookies. Let's hop over to Visual Studio Code and dive in here. So essentially, in this section, I want to create a uh, method to display relative date strings on a page uh, in relation to posts such as 10 minutes ago or three months ago, however old the post was. And in order to do this, first let's create a dynamic rendering route here. In the root of the app directory, we're going to create a, have a folder called dynamic rendering. And that's spelled correctly, yes. Then we need our handy page.jsx file for the stuff that's going to be rendered on the browser. I'm going to grab the code pre-made. Great. And then let's make a couple of changes here. I don't like the Tailwind class of this blue text because we can barely see the date string. So let's make it something popish or pop uh, on the screen. And red's good at a 400. Whoop. At 400 is good. Nope. That's not what I wanted. And that's good. Okay. We'll save that. <clears throat> now, that's fixed. And let's talk through this code. At the top of the file here, this is where we're going to import the date-fns npm package. And this helps us format dates as relative date strings. Now, after that, we have our asynchronous function get post, which defines our WP GraphQL query. And we're just grabbing the first 10 uh, posts. And then here, um, we have a const response uh, fetch call that hits the uh, GraphQL endpoint and encodes the URI. The method we're using is get, and then the content type is JSON. Now, the key here is this key and value here where the cache says no store. This tells Next.js to dynamically render this page and SSR on each request. So we're great there. Then we have the data unstructured and we await the uh, JSON response and then we return it and traverse the data, the post, and then the nodes. Following that, we have another function for the relative, relative date string that parses the string date into a JavaScript date object. Then this calculates the relative date string down here and it returns it in a span tag. Lastly, we have our export default, the async function of this component. And then we have the um, const post, which awaits the get post uh, WP GraphQL data. Then we return that and we map over it, um, displaying a post title. Here's the relative date string and the excerpt. Let's go ahead and cross our fingers, go back to the browser and see if this works. So if I go to the dynamic route or dynamic rendering in the nav bar, there it is. About one month ago, about one month ago, one month ago, awesome. Now, let's try adding a new post here. Stoke test, SSR world. And we're gonna publish that. Let's head back to the browser, refresh. There it is. There's our Stoke test, SSR rules, awesome. And it displays in about five hours. Great, now this works. There are a few considerations in this method, right? Because dynamicism is costly. It requires more load on the server and is less performant. Now this is no longer a cacheable static page that we just made. It'll hit the server on each request. So sometimes it's worth it, but sometimes it's not. It totally depends on your use case. The date-fns library will not be included in the client-side bundle since this is also being used on the server side. Now, 
Next method, and we got two more, is streaming and React Suspense. Let's jump over back to Visual Studio Code real quick and talk about um, streaming and React Suspense. Now, streaming is a data transfer technique that allows you to break down a root into smaller chunks and progressively stream them from the server to the client as they become ready. In this section, let's use streaming to grab data from WP GraphQL and a random endpoint that is not from WordPress. Now, in this case, you could use whatever endpoint you want. Um, there's the Rick and Morty API endpoint, which is very um, <clears throat> popular with different developers out there. However, I just made my own underscore data folder with a db.json file in the root of my project. And I just had a JSON file basically with um, some Star Wars characters' names and um, specific IDs related to the name of the character. And then the NPM package I'm using to serve this off my local server and listen it to port 4000 is where I put it at, is called JSON server. It's an NPM package and I've already got it um, running through an NPX command and it's listening off port 4000. So if I visit localhost uh, characters, uh, localhost 4000 slash characters, I should see all my uh, JSON data there, which, and there, there they are. So that's what I'm doing, but you can use whatever you want. Now, the next thing we're going to do is very similar to what we've done for the um, other routes we've made is we're going to go back to whoops the app um, directory app folder directory and then we're going to create a route called streaming and within this streaming route i have a page.jsx file and then I'm going to create a component called post list.jsx which will render um, will be the component responsible for rendering the uh, WordPress data post uh, post data excuse me and then we're going to have Star Wars list.jsx and this will be the component responsible within this route for rendering the JSON data of Star Wars characters. The next thing we're going to do is just, I'm going to grab the code from, since we're already in the Star Wars list.jsx file, going to grab that code that I've already pre-made and we'll go over it. Now, because we want some latency to take advantage and showcase uh, the streaming and the data being piped in just as they become ready, we simulated a network lake latency up here. So we have an asynchronous function of get characters, which grabs our characters. And right here is the um, promise that resolves and sets a timeout to 3000, which is three seconds. So this will simulate the network latency. Then we have a um, fetch call to that endpoint that we have spun up from JSON server. And then this indicates that we're going to get um, the JSON data. And then um, we're just opting out of cache here. That's fine. And then we have an if statement to check any errors if it failed to fetch. And then right here we have the export default um, function of what we're going to return from get, grabbing that get characters uh, call. And then um, we display, after we map through the character data, we display the ID and the character name. Now let's jump over to post list.jsx. I'm going to grab the code right here. And again, this is very similar to... And again, this is very similar to our recent um, fetch calls within um, our static rendering uh, and dynamic rendering um, pages. 
Uh, we basically have an async function. We await a fetch call. We grab it here. We're going to use a post request here. And then we're going to expect um, send and expect some JSON. Then we have to stringify it since it's a post request. We are not going to cache anything. And then we have an if statement to check um, if the response is OK and if not, throws an error. We've got the um, await of the JSON data and then we traverse it. Then we have that same function for relative date strings as we did in the previous section for dynamic rendering, does the same thing. And then we um, have the default function that shows the post data. Now, one last thing that we need to do to check before to see um, if this works is we want to create a custom loading file within the root of the app and add whatever we're going to add whatever markup style we want. Um, and then we're going to import it to the page component of the streaming route segment and pass that into suspense component. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. So we're going to go in the back in the root of the app folder. Then we're just going to do loading.jsx. This can be anything um, that you'd like. I'm just going to I pre-made this just really simple. Hopefully not for too long is the paragraph tag that displays when it's loading. Now on the page.jsx file within the streaming route we are going to grab some of that code and then essentially we're importing suspense from react and then we're importing loading from the root of our um, application that we just made then the post list and then the star wars list within this route and cross your fingers let's hope this works so actually since i'm listening to the json server from that Terminal, I'm going to open up a new terminal here. I'm going to run npm run dev. And then let's go to localhost 2000. And we're going to go ahead and go to streaming. Let's see if this works. There it is. There was a delay. Here's our WordPress data. Then down here, our favorite Star Wars characters. This works. I'm super stoked. All right, we are down to our last rendering method here on our core competencies video. And the last but not least is client side rendering. Let me go back to Visual Studio Code and then we can dive in here. So client side rendering and components that allow you to write interactive UI that is pre-rendered on the server and can use client JavaScript to run in the browser. Now this was the default rendering method in React before server components as y'all might know. Now in Next14, you now have to declare a component to be client side with the use client directive in a file. Uh, so now you have to actually be very purposeful about it, but before it was default. Very interesting, right? So this section, my idea was to build a dynamic page that grabs the GitHub username query string parameter in the URL, fetches that user's public SSH key and displays it on a page. Now this data fetching and rendering will take place entirely on the client, none of it on the server. So let's do it. Let's create our client side rendering route and we're just gonna have a folder here. We'll name it client. side rendering and in this route segment we're going to have a page.jsx file of course and then we're going to create a component called github ssh key so let's create a file for that let's make sure we're in the client side rendering folder and then it's going to be called github ssh key.js X. Now at the top of the file here, we have that use client directive since we have to now say if this is a client component, use client because as you guys know, defaults to server side rendering and React server components in Next14. 
Now we have our imports here. We have um, use state and use effect from the React library to manage our state and the use effect hook. Uh, and then we have our use search params and that, this will uh, help us access the URL search parameter. And then we have the skeleton from React loading skeleton and that's gonna be our placeholder. Now we have the component definition down here, uh, export default function GitHub. And then what we have here is our constant here to get the URL search params. And then we have the state variables here following next, which is SSH key is used to store the fetched SSH key. And then we have error, which is used to store any error message encountered during the fetch operation. Right here, we have the username, which is extracted from the search param um, from GitHub username from the query parameter. Now we run the use effect hook next runs whenever the username changes. So if the username is present, it triggers an async function fetch SSH key. Let me unhighlight that. So you can see, and this function fetches the SSH key from the slash API slash GitHub um, dash keys endpoint passing the username as a query parameter. If the fetch operation is successful, the SSH key is stored in the SSH key state. And then if an error occurs, the error message is stored in the error state. Then we have a conditional down here. Um, so uh, for any error check, so if there is an error, it renders a paragraph with the error message. And if the SSH key is not yet fetched, then uh, it is an empty string and it displays a skeleton holder here. Now, once the SSH key is fetched, it renders the key inside a pre tag uh, right here. Um, for the performant, a uh, pre-formatted text. So yeah, let's let's try this out because we you know we want this to fetch and display a GitHub users public uh, key based on the query param uh, in the URL. Cross your fingers. Let's hope this works. Going back here to whoops. I'm gonna cut the server and then run it again. Now we're gonna go to the browser. I'm gonna go to uh, client-side rendering and we should have just a empty, three empty white lines across the screen. Yes, GitHub SSH key finder. This is what we have on our client-side rendering page. So what I need to do is just put in the URL a query parameter. And we'll try, um, here, and we'll try mine first. So we're gonna go github dash username equals Fran A Dev, and I think, yep, there there I am, and there's my public SSH key. Now let's simply replace this with another name, Lee Rob from First Cell. And where are you at, Lee? Maybe he doesn't have one. Let's try Kellen Mace. And there's Kellen Mace's. And let's try one more. What is my friend Colby Fayok's GitHub? It's Colby Fayok. And let's try his. And there's Colby's, awesome. And we have a client, fully side client rendered page that pulls out public SSH keys from a user's GitHub. So awesome and stoke, this works. Conclude and wrap up. Next 14 is the latest version of the most used meta framework on top of React. And you saw it introduced new ways to handle data, create routes and files, as well as rendering methods. I hope you have a deeper understanding of how its core competencies work together. Stay tuned for more Next.js 14 and Headless WordPress content coming soon. Always stoked to hear your feedback. Join our Discord and hit us up. Happy coding, y'all.